So we had a conversation earlier this week about important topics that bridge the designer engineer divide. And I figured there's a lot of jargon in software development and I imagine it can be kind of weird and get really old to hear these terms thrown around if you're missing the context. So today my goal is to give us a shared vocabulary. So we're gonna start with a high level view and we're gonna work our way in. Programming languages. Simply put, programming languages are what we use to interface with our computers. Computers run on, bi on ones and zeros, binary code. Humans cannot easily read and understand those ones and zeros, so we use programming languages as a translator. Specifically, a human writes the code, the programming language interprets the code, that code is converted into binary as part of the interpretation, the computer reads that binary, and then the hardware or the, the computer translated translates those ones and zeros onto the hardware where for each one and zero, it is the presence or absence of an electrical impulse. Different types of languages are good at different things. For example, MATLAB is great for math calculations. JavaScript is widely used for web development. R is used for statistics and data modeling. But most Turing complete languages are interchangeable in what they can achieve. It's just their journeys from questions to answers that differ. We consider a programming language a true language if it is Turing complete, which is a whole math thing that I'm not gonna go into, but it basically means that it can, with unlimited memory, theoretically do anything you want it to do. HTML is not Turing complete, but because I can't use it to add 15 and 45, but JavaScript is. In summary, programming languages are just how we communicate with our machines. They're relatively interchangeable in terms of what you can build with them, but there's enough overhead to learning a new language that's likely a place of employment will only work with one or two languages overall. Our languages, we use JavaScript and some of us use TypeScript. Libraries and frameworks. Libraries and frameworks sit on top of programming languages and they use those languages to help programmers do cool things in that language. They're typically language specific. I've said language a bunch of times now, but really all they do is provide code that someone else has written for a specific purpose. For example, the Formic forms we use, Formic is a library. React, that sits on top of JavaScript and it makes building component-based web apps easier. Next.js is the framework on top of the library of React and using Next means that we can use their pre-generated code to do some really specific things in React. There are distinctions between frameworks and libraries, the most important of which is the relationship to the code that we, the developer, write. This is called inversion of control. Frameworks are more rigid in what they allow, which means that your code is really kind of just an accent. Libraries are a little more loosey-goosey in that they're kind of good to hang anywhere, obviously with some caveats. Really though, the most important thing for you to know is that frameworks and libraries are essentially reusable code that someone else has already written to perform specific functions and to make our lives easier. Some of our libraries and frameworks are React and Next, Formic, Styled Components, um, really any kind of code that we didn't write ourselves. Tech stacks. Tech stack, sorry. Tech stacks are just groups of languages, libraries, and frameworks that you use to build your application. They can include your front end tech, your back end tech, your database hosting, and any technology that runs your code in the cloud. Um, the stack is really just the elevator pitch for the tech that you use in your project. It's just a shorthand. Our stacks, we use the MERN stack, which is what we originally did uh, tux in. And now we're refactoring to the grand stack. And um, you notice there's no J in either one of those, but they do both use JavaScript because that's just those libraries and frameworks that are called in the MERN and grand stacks are JavaScript libraries and frameworks. APIs. API stands for Application Programming Interface. Basically an API is just a way to plug in or communicate with another computer. Usually what you're communicating with is a database, a group of information, um, that kind of stuff. So for example, if I wanna build an app that posts tweets to my Twitter account, I can build a whole app that does that work, but I still have to call, which is the verb that you use to access the API. I still have to call the Twitter API in order to interface with their database and their code base in order for my tweet to be posted. The API calls that we'll be making in the Coop website are um, the interest form on the website should call Corey's user Rolodex. Um, Tux in itself, the front end uses AP, like calls the back end um, with so we have our database in the back end. Uh, version control. I need to scoot down on my stuff. Okay, so here are the Coop 
We have several engineers who work on our code base. The code base is just the sum total of all the code that you work on to make your products. You can also break it down and we have the Tux code base, we have the Coop website code base, the user Rolex code base. With all these users or all these engineers, this can get thorny since we know that an application is interconnected and we use version control, specifically here, Git, so that we can stay on top of any potential conflicts. This means that we can have multiple versions of the code on each of our machines, but only one version is running on the website that the user sees. It's basically just a tool to help us from irrevocably breaking things. And then when we do break things, so we can roll it back. Um, and this Git versus GitHub, I thought I would point out that Git is the version control software, but GitHub is really just the social media version of Git. It hosts our code files um, in the cloud, so we can work on any machine that we want to. We can share these things and we can give other people access to the code. So that's it on my vocabulary lesson. Uh, thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs>